Okay, so now we've seen event and message-driven uh, mechanisms that are provided by Spring, as well as scheduling and task execution support, um, both of those working along with lifecycle. All of these being things that the container recognizes just based on your object's definition and either interfaces that are implemented or annotations that are present. So, so far we've been talking about just functionality within the core Spring framework, um, and we added a little bit there that was actually the Spring AMQP project. Now what we're going to do is switch gears and start talking about the Spring integration project. What Spring integration provides is basically a higher level of abstraction for messaging applications. It, um, on one hand, allows you to have different components like a JMS adapter, a file adapter, a web service adapter that can all just be connected to an abstract message channel so that when you receive a message, it could have come from any of those sources. It also adds support for things like transformation, routing, and filtering, which we'll get to in the next section. And basically, what you see in this slide is the message object, which is the, the circle connected to the square, which represents headers as well as a payload. Those message objects are going to be passed across the pipes, which are channels. Connecting uh, between pipes, you have filters, which are actually, you can think of as the, the objects that actually produce and or consume the messages. So if it's, if it's a one-way connection, then you might have something that's firing messages into a channel. And if it's between two channels, then it's probably receiving messages, transforming them in some way, or invoking some service, and then returning the result to the outbound channel. You can also see that we're, we're classifying the framework here as really being two different things. On one hand, it's a messaging API which could be all within process, just inside one JVM. You need to do routing, filtering, transformation, and so on. You can use the enterprise integration patterns even if there's no integration uh, needs with external systems. But that same API also adds the concept of an adapter that can be connected to a channel so that you do external system integration. So first we're looking at the message. The message is as simple as it can be within Spring integration. We have a payload instance and we have a map of headers. You see at the top here, the message interface gives you access to the headers and access to the payload. We don't provide setter methods for these because we don't want you to change a message at runtime since you might have sent it to multiple consumers and then you would have to deal with the concurrency situations that arise from that. So instead, what we have is this message builder API that allows you to add the payload set a number of headers if you need to, and then build the message. And then once you do that, the message, in the sense of its own references to headers and payload, is immutable. Whatever you provide as the payload, if you are uh, trying to have the, the most, um, uh, the simplest scenario for yourself in terms of concurrency, then you would also provide an immutable payload. But if you provide an object that can be mutated, then you have to deal with the concurrency there. At the framework level, we try to avoid that by making sure that there are no setter methods on either the message or the headers, as you see at the bottom. It's all getters. The message has uh, the message headers define some properties um, that are always going to be present, like an ID and timestamp, and then a number of properties that are used by the framework itself. But you can set any key value pair that you want within the headers. Then we have the message channel, which is where we send messages or receive messages from. And as described in the Enterprise Integration Patterns book, there's really two main classifications here. We have point-to-point -point channels where a single consumer will get the message. Even if multiple consumers are connected to this channel, only one of them would get the message. Whereas published subscribe channel is going to broadcast to all of the connected consumers. Now, the value of the channel is really, I, I mean, this is the the most important part of the framework probably because it decouples your producers from consumers. It gives you an extension point so that you can add interception if you need to for things like a wiretap, which we provide. It also gives you the flexibility to change what is on the other side of that channel without affecting the, either the producer or consumer. So we can replace an internal component with an external adapter and it shouldn't make any difference to the other side of that channel. You can also replace the type of channel that you're using uh, depending on the needs of the application. And here are a couple of different types that we provide. Um, really, the internal details of these are going to differ based on whatever configuration you provide. 
most of the time you would rely on the default channel type at the top, which is really just a named destination. And it's going to be synchronous so that when you send to this, it's actually going to invoke the handler in the same thread. That way you can build a pipeline. It's all going to be within one transaction. No transaction boundaries, no thread boundaries are being broken. And if something happens downstream that triggers a rollback, you can roll back the transaction, say maybe your entry point was a JMS um, message-driven adapter. The second one is a handoff because it's using a task executor. So that will return as, as soon as you send to it, as long as that task executor can accept the task. And then it will invoke the handler and the rest of the downstream flow um, within a different thread. Similarly, the third example is using a queue to buffer messages. So this is actually slightly different in that you can control the, the polling interval of your receivers on that so that you might have a steady pace for receiving, but your producers come and go and maybe send bursts of messages. That would be the type of case where you might want to buffer those. Uh, we have a lot of support now for different types of queues, including a JDBC-backed version, if you want this to actually be a transactional boundary within your flow. And then at the bottom, we have a published subscribe example, which is really just broadcasting to handlers um, as opposed to doing point-to-point. -point. Uh, and the last one being a task executor-based version, so it's asynchronous. To send messages, you can obviously um, interact directly with the message channel. But typically, you would wrap this in the messaging template. It's going to be consistent with the approach in JMS template, AMQP template, other places in Spring. It has similarly named methods. The difference is, instead of providing a JMS destination name, we're just providing a channel name or a channel instance. You can call convert and send, in which, it delegate, in which case it delegates to a message converter. And you can pass any object as long as your message converter knows how to handle it. At the bottom, you see that you can set a default channel so that you don't have to provide that as an argument. You can just send objects. If you're going to use this template as always a connection point to a single channel, then that's probably the way you want to go. And then it simplifies your usage of it. Now, the problem with interacting directly with the channel or with the messaging template is that you're then aware of the messaging API. And that might be OK if you're building some kind of framework code. But when you're building an application, that needs to invoke something that fires a message, you don't want to have a dependency on the API at all. In fact, in the Enterprise Integration Patterns book, uh, and I keep referring to this book, I should mention this is Enterprise Integration Patterns by Gregor Hope and Bobby Wolf, which is really the, the has provided the standard um, language to describe these types of patterns. In that book, they talk about messaging gateway as a way to abstract yourself away from some messaging API so that your code is not aware directly of that messaging layer. The way that we handle that is very similar to the way that Spring handles remoting. You can define an interface that you want to use as your integration point. We're going to proxy that interface. And in our implementation of the interface, we create messages from the objects you send in and then fire those off to a channel. We typically recommend using a single method within the interface. Um, but in this example, I'm showing two just so that you can see a couple different options you have. The top one is a one-way, very simple. I'm passing a string. That becomes the payload. The second one is taking a payload object, as shown with the payload annotation, but also taking a header annotation to um, create a header object, uh, to create a header value within the message that's going to be sent. So you can have as many of those as you want. You can even pass in a map of headers. Also, that method returns a string, which means that when our proxy creates this message, it's also going to add a reply header, a reply channel header, so that downstream, eventually, it reaches some point where there's output and no output channel. It's going to send the response back, and this gateway will return it. We do a number of different things inside the gateway so that even if the downstream flow is asynchronous, the gateway itself, by default, will still act like a synchronous component. It's going to block, and it's going to throw exceptions even if that exception originally occurred on a different thread. And you can, you can modify that behavior so that you get asynchronous interaction here, um, either by providing a future return type or by setting an error channel so that, the, um, so that the errors would be handled asynchronously instead of being thrown back. <clears throat> now, a third option, instead of using the template or using a gateway, would be to use this publisher interceptor. And this is actually the AOP approach. So we're specifying a channel we want to send messages to. 
When this method is invoked, it's going to send the return type. In the first case, create booking. In the second case, we're actually controlling the payload um, by using a spell expression to say we want to get the booking ID argument. And you could put anything that is valid uh, spring expression language within the payload value there. So that's going to send that to the cancellations channel. And the important distinction between this and gateway is that this is actually an annotation on an existing method, a concrete implementation of a method that you're going to be calling at runtime within your application. So you can think of this as messaging as a byproduct of that method invocation. Whereas with the gateway, it actually is your, your, um, your interface into the messaging system. Now, just like we, sh we saw with the scheduled annotation, typically you don't want to have the channel name directly in your code. Uh, you might want to reuse it in multiple places. So we recommend using Publisher as a meta annotation if possible. And then you can have a domain-specific annotation that you add to methods. The channel is only defined in one place within that annotation. And there's also an XML alternative to this. Uh, so the whole thing can be done externally in a declarative um, standard spring configuration model with our namespace support. Okay, so that's the different ways you can send a message. To receive a Spring integration message, all you need to do is, is provide a model that's very similar to the JMS message listener container support. Here, the only difference is that we have input channel and output channel instead of a JMS destination name because we're talking about Spring integration message channels. And we still have ref and method as an option. Um, service activator is kind of the most generic um, component. We're going to see all of the other enterprise integration patterns in a moment. But with Service Activator, you're basically, it's, it's like the equivalent of a message-driven POJO for JMS. We want to invoke some bean, and if there's a result, send it to this output channel. 